guys, in these last 10 minutes, I want to just show a couple of things. Uh, you have kind of nicely shown the Range of Motion MMT app as well as kind of the Ortho app. So I'm just going to share. Oh, Sam, could you stop sharing screen so I could okay. share screen? And I was just going to show here. Um, let me take us to one quick thing that is coming. Here is virtual reality gait analysis of a number of pediatric patients. And so you can have the patient walking. And eventually we will have the Edinburgh gait analysis tool here guiding the student through the gait analysis. You can wander around, of course, and look at the patient as they're going through and doing their gait. So where is this little guy? And so these are real patients that have been motion captured and then avatars applied on them. The other thing that's kind of cool is I can stop the person, change the height of my view, walk closer, and then apply a posture grid or a goniometer. And this will again allow for some type of asynchronous interaction. You could do it synchronously or asynchronously. But this is one of the new things that PhysioU is bringing um, in partnership with University of Idaho. Now, the, um, the GATE app, which kind of ties nicely to that, to that, was our attempt to improve the way that students learn about movement. So again, we believe that in the early phases, static images with information always laid next to the body image so that you could make sense of, oh, hip flexion at initial contact. Yep, that's hip flexion. I think that's a really key part that sometimes the textbooks can't do. Or tying in EMG activity to the image so that they could make sense of why the anterior tib is firing so hard to prevent foot slap. And here's your critical events. And then here, when you look at, when they're done learning, you can move into the analyze phase where you have videos of regular speed, different views in slow motion, and range of motion real time from our movement lab, or EMG real time. So you can see the anterior tib is active during swing and it quiets down once the foot's on the ground. And we've also filmed all the common deviations on real patients so that you can now have a conversation with the students and all of this is in one, one place. What are some of the causes? The cause links to the intervention. So from the PTA perspective, this is why we are doing the strengthening. Or from the PT perspective, what do you think that we should examine to try to decide what impairments are present? We also then filmed a bunch of prosthetic gait deviations. So with these are, this is a professor, a prosthetics professor. And every different type of, uh, different type of problem we wanted to demonstrate, he would just take his prosthesis off remove a battery, stiffen an ankle joint, and he would then go ahead and show, you know, basically provide the different deviations. And then what we've been working on here is how do we create a more interactive classroom? So now you have patients that you can observe together and you can read their age, their occupation, their chief complaint, what are some ags and eases, and there's some clinical reasoning questions. And what we've been doing, actually, we haven't released it yet. All the answers are now hidden in a little drop-down button. So you can have the conversation and then reveal the answer and have a discussion together. What deviations did you see at the hip? What did you see at the ankle? What muscle tightness or joint tightness may contribute to these symptoms? So all of these conversations, I think, create this, um, this clinical context for all the things that they're learning or how to make decisions. And so I think those are a couple of things that really come in, come in quite handy. Um, Sam, if you don't mind opening back up to 
uh, I'm going to stop sharing screen. Can I, can I ask a question? Uh, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. When you were showing the video of the gate analysis, I yes. think uh, it's something that will really enhance that is doing uh, using a walkway for gate analysis or a xenomat. You know, I don't, I don't know you're familiar with it. So you know, like when you were showing the pediatric um, gate analysis, one yeah. thing that is missed right there is when the pressure point, where the pressure points are in that particular uh, gate cycle, what particular area of the gate cycle. If you use a walkway gate analysis of, or the Xenomat, Z-E-N-O-M-A-T, yeah, then care. you will be able to see both the gate pattern and the pressure that is being placed in different areas of the foot. So there is a correlation between mm. how the motion is happening in, in what phase of the gate the, the, the uh, child is or the adult, and then in what area of the foot is that pressure being um, a exerted exerted right forefoot hind foot side of the foot exactly and especially when a child has or an adult that has a gate deviation that is uh, um, difficult to analyze just because on a video you will see a 2d image all right and right you are able to uh, put the, uh, or, or see the gates the gate in from different uh, points of view yeah yes? like uh, using a 3d um, motion capture equipment, then you will see, be able to see. But even then, it is easier, it is difficult, sorry, to, to really see where the exact point of pressure is happening at the foot. So Definitely. The Xenomat or uh, a walk, walkway gate analysis system will really enhance that. We used one at the university and it's uh, uh, very complementary. And then students have a better um idea what is going on so you could add something like that definitely i'll put it on the wish list i'll put it on the wish list we also struggled with how much information was too much information um but i think what you're mentioning jorge is actually a really fascinating idea we pr i think we just added a force plate of some sort um into our movement lab and i will kind of explore that with our the author who put Put this together so thank you for, for mentioning that um actually sam i can share my screen real quick so if you would just okay. stop share screen and i'm just going to finish off um by let me share screen and i know we're a little past time but i want to show you just a little bit of data of how our students are responding to this and then to show you which apps are coming up next so let me do slideshow Play from current. So we presented this data at ELC last year. And the students reminded me in this survey that, Dr. Wong, we are not buying the textbooks you're telling us to buy because we don't feel like it's helping us learn. So I was like, whoa, OK. So 80% of the students are buying less than 40% of the textbooks required or recommended, which also kind of drives this decision for us to begin to think of using different resources or building new resources that meet the need of this new generation. When we ask them, how are the apps helping you? Many of them basically said that it really helped in my mastery and confidence. I could practice these techniques before, during, and after class because I knew I had them. It helped me to prepare for the clinic because I could see how all the different pieces were bridged together. It really helped with my synthesis and learning. I think this has a lot to do with revisiting content within a context rich environment and giving meaning to the things they learned in the past, making it relevant again as you are launching them into the clinic and helping with clinical reasoning. So we play these apps out. I play the apps out with them in orthopedics every week and I begin to link things and invite them to have conversations with me about what kind of things would we examine? What kind of impairments might drive this condition? So I think a lot of that, let, uh, it can happen because I have this roadmap of all these common conditions that I want to have conversations about. So that's really in the orthopedic app. They mentioned that it reduced my anxiety in lab. Yesterday when I said, guys, these techniques, you don't have to film it, it's all there for you a collective sigh of relief, all the phones went down and they started focusing in on what I was saying. 
It's more efficient for the student. They can watch the videos. Guys, we are going to learn about balance testing this week. Please watch these seven balance videos before we come to lab. They have this explicit instruction and now are better in their lab because they have pre-exposed themselves to these techniques. And then development as a student clinician. We, you know, be, besides our, we always have a few students who struggle. I think we will always have that. That's the nature of the business. But we have had a lot of great feedback from the, from the clinicians saying, your students come in, they seem to have all the pieces together better. And I think it's because we do that on, on purpose in the classroom. We're working with a lot of different programs. I mean, Marcy's been putting in a lot of work uh, at Mendocino. Um, Marcy, Marcy are, you're, it's Mendocino and you guys are at Santa Rosa, is it? Sonoma. Uh, uh, we're at Shasta College, which is Shasta in Red Right. Yeah, so Mendocino and it's Shasta. Partnered. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we have a lot of different faculty who are giving us feedback. We're adding things because faculty need different things. And that's, again, the beauty of the online platform. And you can see that we have been working at this a long time. So every clinical practice guideline for orthopedics is built into our apps. This year, we are actually in the final phases of PNF with uh, uh, Kaiser Vallejo. We have a therapeutic exercise app coming out that's guideline based. We are about to release probably next week patient education. Patient education is essentially a tool and let me just show you real quick because we're quite excited about it. Patient education, this is on our development platform. Again, we partnered, uh, we, we basically put in all of the JOSPT patient perspectives. So let's say head and neck. Here are client focused patient education that has a little verbal introduction that reduces their fear tells them a little bit about what's going on, gives them some ideas of what we're going to do in physical therapy, and some basic exercises that they might want to try. And also here, all the JOSPT patient perspectives that are available that are relevant to this region are here for you to deliver to your patients. So they can either scan it with their phone or you can just email it to them. So patient education is how our students is going to finish every eval is I have an article for you that helps you to understand your problem better. So that should be coming out probably early next week. And lastly, I would say, um, if I come back to here, you can see that we have, um, let's see, the developmental milestones coming out by CSM. We just released a splinting app. We, we have medical, uh, medical screening already all filmed. I just haven't had time to pull it all together. And um, we have a lot of fun a functional movement app. Um, we have a lot of new things that are coming down the pipe that, that I think will continue to augment your classroom. And this is what the students get with their subscription. So what is the cost of students? The cost of students is essentially $54 a year. And all the updates and all the new apps basically just upload into the web. For many of the programs who are who are who want the students to have it throughout the whole program, they basically pay for three years and get four years all the way into their first year of clinical practice. For all faculty, if you have, I think you have already received, received an email that says this is how you log in. So all of you have full access to PhysioU. We would love for you to start using it to improve your, your, make your life easier and improve the student's learning experience. If you're wondering how to direct students to get it, you can simply go to physiou.com. And if you go to student, they can sign up with their student discount here. So it, it, it could be as simple as that, unless you wanted to go through the bookstore of which the bookstore will, of, of course, often upcharge, and they, but they can now use their, their financial aid. 